guys, it's your girl Queen Wolf AJ here, and in this video, I am posting a little interview that Delicate, a fantastic jam ambassador, had with a CEO of Animal Jam, Clark Stacy. So yeah, I just want to be clear that Delicate made this video. Delicate did the interview. Um, she said that I could post this. So please don't attack me. I swear she said that I could use this video. This video is about Animal Jam Play Wild, but if you haven't checked out the classic one already, go ahead and do that. So without further ado, enjoy Delicate's video. I'm Clark Stacy. I am the uh, CEO of Wildworks, and um, I'm, uh, gosh, what would my relationship to, to Animal Jam be? Uh, benevolent overlord, yeah, maybe. We are, as mentioned, a pretty small company. So the core team that's uh, that's based in, in Salt Lake City is, what, 34 people. Um, we work with uh, some staff in, uh, in the Philippines that helps with customer service and moderation. Um, and we have you know, contractors for various things around the world, but really the team that is in charge of Animal Jam, everything from marketing to customer service to uh, new content, um, supporting existing content, all of the games that we do, that's that's the team. It's um, it's about thirty four people. Um, so it's it's we're not uh, we're not Epic or Sony or, or Microsoft. You know, we um, you know, we don't have thousands of people to to throw at, uh, at problems. We have to be pretty selective about what we tackle. We have a pretty active internship program. Um, we work both with local universities and with uh, some national and international universities. Uh, we, I, th I think that our internship program over the past few years is particularly uh, uh, prized finding women interested in getting into the games industry and uh, trying to create some opportunities for them. Um, but we are we are always interested in talent across a variety of disciplines, from art and animation to engineering. Um, I think the best way to get into the games industry in general is to you know, work on your own personal portfolio. Um, it's it's an arena where you know a university degree is just not as meaningful as uh, your GitHub or as your. Uh, uh, deviant art profile or you know wherever you're uh, kind of exhibiting your work um, that's what every company is going to look at first but it's also what we would look at first uh, anybody interested in uh, internships with wildworks and animal jam can send an email to careers at wildworks.com um, for salaried full-time positions we usually but not always post those on the wildworks website uh so if you're if you're interested in kind of being kept informed about uh new opportunities then send an email to to that address include you know your uh your resume and a bit about you and uh and you know we'll try and give you a heads up as opportunities emerge yes they're definitely will and i know that a few people have asked about that i would i would love to hear more from the community um just on what what would be most valuable or exciting to them um you know i'll i'll tell you something that uh that happened with the the original run of animal jam toys is you know, we worked with a company called jazzwares as our master toy licensee and i think they did really awesome stuff um but at the same time they were targeting I think a younger demographic than Animal Jam's player base really was. They were wanting to compete with uh, like Shopkins and LOL Surprise, and that's the reason why we had the uh, Adopt a Pet um, you know, blind box things that you find out what you get when you open it up, um, which are cool. But I think you know most of our players are are a little too old for Shopkins and LOL Surprise. It's not the kind of collectible that they're really into or the kind of toys that they really buy. I think that they, they're they still into toys and collectibles, but probably more stuff that they can like, you know, collect and, you know, show off to friends or to their followers or something and not, 
you know, not make little play sets out of, or maybe they do. I don't know. Um, but anyway, part, <laughs> part of the reason that, uh, so we went through three refreshes of the, uh, of those adopt a pet animals and decided jointly with Jazzwares that, you know, this, um, we, we sold a ton of them. It was a top 10 toy the first year that it came out. Um, but it, it tapered off pretty sharply after that, I think, because it just wasn't the right toy for that demographic. And at the time, felt like probably something more like like pop vinyls or uh, or more you know kind of limited edition collectible uh, animal jam figures would be more suitable and I still feel that way but I would still love to hear feedback from the community on what they want to see I think um, I think one of our priorities right now is to we're talking to some potential apparel licensees uh, and we would do some new, um, some new AJ apparel. I think uh, there's also in the works, probably with the first, with the same licensee, uh, some things like posters and other collectibles like that. Um, but as far as toys go, I would really love to do toys. I would really love to do more plush, particularly if it was like collectible. Um, uh you know collectible small plush or but you know i i need to hear from you guys you you guys will ultimately determine what it is that we want to make and you would have a very direct influence on that because what you send to us to ajhq to to leisha or whatever about what you would like to see as far as animal jam toys that's something that we put together and we take that to the licensees that we're talking to and we say, look, this is our, our community is calling for this kind of toy. And that makes it very easy for them to say, okay, you're, you're right. Let's do it. So yeah, it's, it's coming. It hasn't been a, a high priority while we kind of get our feet under us following the acquisition, uh, it, becoming a, assimilated into a publicly traded company. There's a lot of complexity to that just on the financial and business end. Uh, but yeah, now we're, we have found our feet there and that relationship is going really well. So I think there is going to be the opportunity to, um, to focus on some of those things. There, there are a couple of reasons that we stopped doing the boxes and I'll be, I'll be totally uh, candid with you. The main one was I saw the quality going down really, really fast. And uh, the partner that we were working with there, they were just, they, you know, they started out producing some really great stuff. And I think uh, there was, there was good value for, you know, for the subscription cost and uh, we, and we were pretty happy with it, but just more and more, we started seeing real junk coming out in the boxes and we were getting complaints from the community saying, you know, I, I got this subscription box and this didn't work or this was broken already. Um, and we didn't have any control over that. We didn't, um, we didn't uh, produce those products or really get to quality test them before they went out. Um, so that's why if we found a, a great partner that was uh, doing subscription boxes and and wanted to enter into that with us again, I would totally do it because I, I think it was it was a lot of fun. And I think even just the art on the boxes itself was really cool and fun and collectible. Um, so I would love to do that. It would mean finding uh, a different partner and uh, the market for collectible uh, or for subscription boxes like that isn't uh, quite what it was a few years ago, but I, I can see some evidence that it's picking up again. It's definitely huge in parts of Latin America. Um, so, you know, it's, it's in the mix of things to look at. Uh, I think it's going to require finding a partner who's going to do really high quality stuff for us. So, Eos. Hmm. Uh, Wow. So at the at the time that when we were working on classic, we were trying to find what was the right balance between uh, lore and story content, um, the adventures that that we were working on, 
but also some of the core social content that, that people really love. And we were doing a lot of analysis of you know, what are people using most in the game. And by a pretty wide margin, Club Geos was just not being used in Classic. People just weren't spending a whole lot of time in there. Um, at, at least, you know, certainly not compared to, to other stuff. And we wanted to showcase uh, the alphas and some of the storylines that we were creating and the new adventures. So it made sense at the time for us to take Club Geos out and replace it you know, with the Alpha headquarters so that it was more front and center in Jamaa Township. Um, so that's that's the reason for it. But overall, it really comes back to just how much were people using it at the time uh, compared to yeah, how much they were asking us for new story and lore type content. And as we, as we brought Animal Jam to mobile and kind of rebuilt the experience there, uh, we wanted it to reflect, particularly the most familiar part of Animal Jam, the, the Jama Township. We wanted it to reflect the classic uh, as closely as possible. So we mirrored that there, even though um, you know, we didn't have all of the story and lore and adventure content uh, in, in Play Wild at the time. So you guys are going to love what's coming. Um, Yes, I, I think that you're going to find that a lot of the kind of big marquee new features coming to Animal Jam in the near future are very centered around player generated content and the ability to create cool stuff and share it with friends and, and all that. Um, I, I, think that's, I think that's vital for the, the growth of the game. Um, and I, I think you know, we see pretty clear evidence that it's uh, it's a part of the experience that people really uh, value highly is, uh, and we see such amazing stuff come out of all of those, out of Master Tracks and uh, and Masterpiece, and so expect to see not only um, I would I would say some some meaningful improvements coming to the existed existing uh, creative tools. Uh, but new creative tools and kind of entire new creative experiences for Animal Jam are a very high priority here right now. Oh, yeah. um, as far as new languages and new territories, um, some folks might remember we uh, did a, a what was a pretty significant behind the scenes overhaul technically in order to support the Russian alphabet and language. Um, and part of the reason that we did that at the time was because we had our eye on Japanese and Korean um, and some other, and Mandarin and you know Asian languages that would require some of the same uh, Unicode technology for. Uh, how we handle text in the game. Um, so that's there and it's it's available. Here's the, the only reason that we haven't uh, gone into Japan yet. Uh, I've spent a, a fair amount of time in Japan and Korea and, and traveling around Asia. Um, and the game market there is very different, particularly with, um, with kids kind of in the Animal Jam age range. Uh, I don't think as Americans or Welsh people or people in the West, we we really have a grasp on what drives popular culture there. We've got a lot of fans of their popular culture, but um, I, I don't I don't think we've got a good cultural pulse of what works and what doesn't in that culture. Which means that it's not just a matter of translating the language. It means we need a partner there that is going to help us translate the game culturally which probably means an overhaul of you know, a lot of visual elements, of, um, of some user interface elements. It's not going to be as simple as the translations to other romance languages that, that we've done. Um, it, it needs a close partnership there. I think that a lot of, a lot of games in the past, particularly from, uh, from the US, have gone into Japan just assuming that because they're popular here, they'll be popular there. And uh, and they do very poorly because I think um, uh, the Japanese gaming culture and, and Korean really 
value something that sounds and looks native to their ear. And uh, so I was just at the Game Developers Conference in, uh, in March in San Francisco. Um, maybe a quarter of the conversations I had there were with potential partners uh, in Japan and other regions of Asia um, talking about that kind of uh, cross-pollinated licensing and how we might pull that off. So those conversations are underway for sure. We saw that question and that, um, that really concerned me. So uh, I will be taking a look at and our team will be taking a look at the, the Spanish language translation. Um, any specific examples that people can offer would be super helpful, um, particularly when it comes to stuff that's uh, that's kind of cultural or idiomatic translation, where it's you know uh, maybe the words are technically right, but it just sounds weird. Um, but would love to have some examples, regardless of that. Though we'll take part of the deal that we made when we were acquired by Nazara. <laughs> and part of what they asked of us is focus 100% of your attention on Animal Jam and what's what's make Animal Jam, uh, what's make it grow again, what's make it, um, you know, a, an exciting platform that where kids are anticipating real new stuff coming out all the time. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being patient with us and uh, and tolerant of our efforts and mistakes over the last few years. Um, I'm very excited for what's coming next in Animal Jam, particularly because you know, we have the investment and the mandate now from, uh, from our parent company to make Animal Jam our top priority and delivering for this community is going to be the absolute focus of, of what we do. So, um, yeah, thank you for, for sticking with us. Thank you for being a part of the AJ community. You are, you are what makes it more than just a game and you will, you've got some exciting things coming, I promise.